All right, Shalom. We want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And salutations to all the hopeful elect that's pushing this word and truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the globe. Um, we back at, uh, coming back at you with another lesson. We're going to title this Love or Negligence. All right? And um, the basis of this lesson is, um, you know, you, you, you deal with these people in the world, and um, they, they say uh, pretty much that love... <laughs> They say that love is, uh, you know, they think that love is catering to an another person's feelings, you know, you know, allowing them to, to, to fulfill their flesh, i.e. Uh, a homosexual. You know, if you have a homosexual kid, they say, well, we love them, so we got to let them do what they do, you know. Or say you got a, a child and he's real, <laughs> uh, they, they, they're kind of heavy, heavy set, getting fat, you know, and then you just keep on feeding them the foods that they like <laughs> Excuse me. You keep feeding them the foods that they like, man, because you you so called love them, you know, and you don't want to hurt their feelings by telling them they can't do that. You gotta change the way you eat, you know. Well, according to the scriptures, we know that that's not love, man, you know. So we are gonna get into uh, we are gonna get into that, you know. And the first scripture get a uh, First John fifth chapter. Uh, okay. What love is? It's First John five and three. It says, "For this is the love of the Most High, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous." Right. That's the love of the Most High, that we keep His commandments, and that His commandments are not grievous. Alright? Now, when you <clears throat> when you telling somebody, if you're telling somebody um, <laughs> the commandment of the Lord, it shouldn't be grievous unto them. You know? Because it's, it's right. All the, all the commandments, all the words of the Heavenly Father is pure. You know? And it's right. So, and it's for your own benefit, pretty much. You know? And that's love. Your love is keeping the commandments. Alright? Right, love is not an emotion, you know. You don't have a choice of, of, of what you decide to, you know, like, it, there's no choice in this thing. You know, it's right or wrong. If, if somebody's wrong, you got to correct them. That's right. Uh, get, the, get the one in Leviticus, huh? Yeah, I'm there. All right. 19. This is uh, Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. It says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother, in thine heart, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon him. Right. It says, "Thou shalt not hate thy neighbor in thy heart, or thy brother in thy heart." All right. Uh, let me see. Yeah, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Now, hate is the opposite of love, right? You know. And it says what? <clears throat> it says, um, "Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer sin upon him." All right. So. If you if you don't rebuke your neighbor, you hate you hate him, you know because what you suffering sin to be upon him, you know if you're not rebuking him and telling him what to do, telling him the right thing to do, then he gonna continue continuously add sin upon sin, you know, he, he he's gonna and, and, and the, he's gonna have to pay a more heavier judgment than what he had to pay in, in the beginning. All right, uh, keep reading a little bit. Uh, uh, this is verse uh, verse eighteen. It says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. That, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know? Because that's what true love is. Just like uh, uh, the scriptures talk about when you're supposed to love your wife. You know? It said you love her as yourself because whoever hurt, whoever uh, wanted to harm their own, their own flesh. You know? So that's what love is, man. The, According to your family, you know, they don't know the true definition of love. Because if you really love somebody, you want the best for them. And the best for them is to, to, to listen to the, the words of the Lord, man. <laughs> Otherwise, they're not going to receive salvation, you know. So that's why you rebuke, you rebuke your, uh, your, your neighbor, you know. You got something? Oh. Um, go to uh, Proverbs 8. 8 yep, yep. It's Proverbs 8 and 36. Yeah. It says, but Probably he that sinneth against me wrongeth his, wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Right. You that sinneth against the Heavenly Father wrongeth your own soul. You know? Because, and it says, all that, uh, read that again, Oxford. Yeah, God. This is uh, Proverbs 8 and 36. It says, but he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. See? So when you sin against the Heavenly Father, you wrong with your own soul, man. You know? 
And, and that means you hate him. When you don't want to do what he tell you, what the Heavenly Father tell you to do, <laughs> that means you hate him, man. That means you become an enemy of the Lord, which means you love death, man. You know? Because that's the, exactly, that's the point. Because you're supposed to, re if you're not rebuking him, and he continuously adds sin upon sin, the scriptures say, the Heavenly Father rewarded the iniquity uh, to, the, to uh, the, the third and fourth generation. You know, so he, every time you come back, you're going to have to face that judgment of the sins you did. Instead of you just being uh, rebuked and, 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 um, when your sin wasn't that far. You know, like Esau, his sins is getting reached up to, into the, the heavens, man. You know, and his judgment is going to be heavier because of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, come on, go ahead, bro. This is James chapter 1, verse 15. It says, Then when lust hath conceived, it bring forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That's right. So, you know, like the brother was going into, if you don't rebuke your neighbor or your brother, when he is sinning and going off, that means that you hate your neighbor because, you know, his ways are leading towards death. But if, mm -hmm. you, re if you rebuke him, you're, you're trying to help him or stop him from going down the path of death. Right. And that's love. <laughs> That's when, when, when scriptures, and it's a commandment to love your neighbor, man. Yeah. You know? That's love. Because here it is, we all, we all was in America, man. You know, which is the exact opposite of the, uh, the, the righteousness of the Heavenly Father. So we got them ways on us, you know? But, but it's, it's, it's good to have the brothers there, you know, especially brothers that's older than you, to correct you, man. To tell you the right way. Right. And scriptures say, uh, it's in Proverbs. Yeah, Go ahead. This is Proverbs 9 and 8. It says, Reprove not a scorner lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. Yeah, that's exactly the scripture I was thinking in my head. You know, and that's the spirit. You know, rebuke a wise man and he shall love you. That's what the scriptures say, iron sharpened if iron, man. You know? Hey, so when you, when you, if, if somebody telling you the right thing, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to like that. Because you want to walk that good way. You know? You want to know where you are in error at, man. That's right. You know? I'm going to get down, or you got it? You said Proverbs what? 19. I got it, I'm right 19 here. 19 and 16. Yeah. This is Proverbs 19 verse 16. It says, He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul, but he that despiseth his ways shall die. You right. know, and that's the exact opposite of him that uh, uh, hate me, love death. You know, that wrong with the, uh, they wrong with their own soul pretty much. You know, but right. if you keepeth the commandments, it says what? Then you keep your own soul, man. You know? Right. And how are you keeping the commandments is by showing love. And how do you show love is by correcting them when they're going off. Yeah, you know, if you see if you see uh if, if, if a brother saying some some gay ass shit, you supposed to correct them. Excuse my language. But you supposed to correct them. You see a brother going off lusting over a married woman, you supposed to correct them. Why? Because you love that brother. You don't wanna see him uh, uh fall. You're not supposed to have respect the person and be like, yeah, 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 I don't want to hurt his feelings. That's showing that you hate him. The scriptures say in that, uh, what, uh, uh, what was it, Proverbs 19, 16? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, it says, he that keepeth uh, the commandments keepeth his own soul. That's the commandment. By showing love to your brother, showing correction to your brother. You know? It says, but he that despiseth his ways shall die. And if you don't do this, you're going to die. You know, because Luke, what was it? Uh, Luke 12 and 47, where it was talking about the stripes. You know, uh, uh, to, to much given, much is required. You know, if you knew this stuff, you're going to be beaten with many stripes. But he that didn't know is going to be beaten with fewer stripes. So it's on the brothers that know. It's on the older brothers to guide the flock in the right direction. And that's the love. That's right. Because when you go back into the Leviticus, it says, suffer sin upon him, you know, suffer him to add sin unto sin. Hey, that blood going to be on your hands too, because you didn't do anything about it, you know? You got you to gotta correct that man. You know, that's a, part of, that's a part of your job as being judges, man, you know? Um, but good, get that, huh? This is Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yahweh Shai said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. In Matthew 10 and 18, um, 10 and um, 28. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See, on them two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So, hey, how many laws is it? It's about 613 laws. Uh, it's 613 laws. And what? Them, them laws was summed up in the Ten Commandments. But, but all the whole laws and commandments were summed up in those two scriptures, man. You know, if you, if you do those two, you love the Lord with all your heart. And then you love your brother. You summing up the, the law, you know? <laughs> Hey, because, hey, if you're not committing adultery, which is one of the Ten Commandments, if you love your brother, you're not going to commit adultery. You know? So you're not going to sin against the Lord. But get that on one in Matthew. You said 10 and 28. Yeah. Okay. This is Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. It says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather... Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Right. So that's what? What was the first commandment? The first commandment. Y'all shall say unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Right. And that goes into fearing the Lord. You know? So we ain't supposed to fear nobody, you know, but the Lord. Because what? It says, fear him whom can kill uh, the body and the soul in hell. So when you come back. Yeah, if I'm saying that correctly, that's it. Just read that again. So I don't want to mess it up. This is uh, Matthew 10 and 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. To, to destroy both soul and body in hell. Alright? So, hey, when if you add sin upon sin, then you just letting your sins build up. And when you come back for that judgment, the heavenly father can destroy you in that, in that, uh, in that, your next life, which is in hell. That's what the scripture just said. You know, because uh, hell is played out under the sun on the earth for, for, for you idiots out there, you, you Christians, all right? You know, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not somewhere where you go burn forever, man. You know, this, this is realistic here, you know? Um, but yeah, you add sin upon sin and you can come back even worse, which... If you if you actually read the scriptures, our, our forefathers understood that because the, the the guy who was blind, they said, "Who whom did sin? Him or his parents?" Yeah. You know, so they knew that you can come back and, and from 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 uh, had that judgment on you from sinning, man. Right. You know. Right. The scriptures also say, uh, roughly paraphrasing, does, "Does any man die being innocent or perish being innocent? God forbid." Meaning, no. So, can you explain a two-year-old, three-year-old? Dying in a horrible car accident, they, exactly. they wasn't innocent. Exactly, it had to have been in their past life. Right. Exactly. So we're gonna get an example of uh, example of being negligent, pretty much. Matter of fact, get the uh, get the word because we got the definition for love in the scriptures, but we want to get the definition of negligence. Uh, the Merriam Dictionary. Mm -hmm. Whatever. This is a uh, negligence off of the MerriamWebster.com. It says. Failure to Eli. failure to exercise yeah. the care that a reasonably prudent person would exercise in like circumstances. Which one? Read it again. All right, I read the B definition. Uh huh. It says failure to exercise the care that a reasonably prudent person would exercise in like circumstances. See, and that's not loving your brother. You know, that's not loving someone as yourself, man. You know, so you being negligent, it says failure to exercise the care that a reasonably reasonably prudent person would exercise in like circumstances, man. You know? So 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 if you if you understand what's right and you're not doing it, and you're not correcting that person on it, then you're being negligent. You just let it, allowing it to happen, man. You know, you you turning a blind eye to it, so to speak. You know? Yeah. So we're gonna get into the uh scriptures. Where Eli pretty much was being negligent, you know, because he didn't correct his sons, you know. Um, first Samuel 2 and 12 start from. Okay. <coughs> you get the third chapter out. This uh, first Samuel 2 and 12. It says, now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. Bel Belial. Go look up that word in the blue letter. Huh? Belial. I think I know what it means. They knew not Yahweh. First, uh, this brother got to jump down to 17. Well, nah, you can keep reading. Uh, let me see. I think uh, my shit was rested. Uh, 
you, what, what scripture did you read? Oh, Belial. 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 You want to look up that word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, it says, it says in my margarine, mm -hmm. worthless mm -hmm. men. All right, go ahead, read it in the Hebrew too. All right, so the Hebrew word is Balal Ya Allah, and uh, it means worthlessness, worthless, good for nothing, unprofitable, base <laughs> fellow, <laughs> wicked, ruin, destruction. Right, so they was wicked, you know, unprofitable. You know, they not edifying, they not building up, but they was destroying, man. You know, they was wicked. Right, because if I may say this, uh, what the scriptures say, he that committed for adultery uh, have no understanding. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Uh, so he said, he said, they were sons of Belial and they knew not Yahweh. All right. And if you keep reading, it's going to tell you the things that they did. Uh, I started seventeen. Um, so you gonna read down to seventeen? No, nah, we're gonna just you know brothers can read through that. You know, uh, you can read verse seventeen. Just read what's on the thing. Yeah, this is uh, First Samuel two and seventeen. It says, "Wherefore the sin of the young men were very great before Yahweh, for men abhorred the offerings of Yahweh. But Samuel ministered before Yahweh, being a child." Girded with a linen at ephod. No, no, no. Just read. Uh, go to verse 22. So long. Yes, long. Uh, verse 22, it says, Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto Israel, unto all Israel, and how they lay with the, the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacles of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. So, so the people was complaining to Eli about his sons. All right, but he was rebuking them. He was telling them what what what, what was off. You know, like he asking them why are you doing this thing. That's what that's what we at right now. But we gonna get what he should have did. But keep going. Keep reading. Just keep reading. Okay. Uh, Verse 24, it says, Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make your house people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against Yahweh, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because Yahweh was slave. Right, so the Heavenly Father already hardened their hearts, man. You know, because he wanted to kill them. Because pretty much they sinned against the Heavenly Father. They ain't just sinned against um, one because they was making the people go off now at that point. The people bought the uh, sacrifices because of what they did, man. You know? Uh, what was Where you at? Good, okay. At 26. Okay. And just keep keep reading. I don't want to get to... Um, 29. Yeah, I think it's... Yep, yep. Keep, just keep reading, now. It says... And the, and the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with Yahweh and also with men. And I'm like them two, them two sons. <laughs> Keep right. on. And there came a man of the Most High unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh, I did plainly appear unto the house of thy father when thy were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house. And did, and did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest? To offer upon my altar to burn incense and to wear an ephod before me. And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offering made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye my sacrifice and at my offer which I have commanded in the habitations and honorous thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel my people right so what he said he said he said um and honor is thy sons above me you know because they was they was uh taking of the sacrifices man you know which was the Lord's and he didn't he ain't, he ain't stop him he just he just said something to him but he ain't really stop him you know keep going verse 30 it says, Wherefore, Yahweh, thy power of Israel, saith, I said indeed that, that thy house and 
the house of thy father shall walk before me forever. But now, but now Yahweh saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me, that for them that honor me, I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Going back into them that that hate the Lord, love death, man. You know, so uh, we jump to uh, the third chapter. Number and, uh, thirteen. Yeah. All right, kind of. This is um. We'll go to uh, read verse, verse twelve. Verse twelve. This is uh, First Samuel. And this is the Most High talking to Samuel. You know, telling him what he he gonna do to them. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I, be when I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the, for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. See? And he restrained them not. So that's the whole point. You know, they made he made themselves vile and he restrained them not. Alright? Now, what it says, I just wanted to get that word because I got it. It said he he it says he rebuked them not. <laughs> you know? Which he, he said something to him, but he, like we said, he didn't really do something about it. Now uh before you get that up, uh, go to um uh Deuteronomy 21st chapter and the 18th verse. You know, because this is what you should have did. You know, and this is what goes into disobedient children, man. You know? You got it? You got Deuteronomy, right? You said me to get Deuteronomy? Yeah, but anybody can get it. Oh, yeah, you said fine. Deuteronomy fine. what? Uh, 21 and 18. 21 and 18. I got you. It's Deuteronomy 21 and 18. It says, If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father, or the father, or the voice of his mother, and that, when they have tasted him, will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, and bring him unto the elders of his city, and unto the gates of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, This is our son, Salakia. This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and drunkard. That's pretty much. Oh, Keep going. No, no, no. Uh, and all the men of the city shall stone him with stones, and that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. See, it even goes to the point to where them children. Them sons, that son, your, your children will get put to death. You know? For what? One thing is that for all Israel will fear, because then what? Then he's not going to make everybody go against the Heavenly Father, where he's going to have to judge us as a whole, you know? And then what? Now they, now he's not sending against the Heavenly Father no more. Just like the two-thirds. You know, they got to get put out of their misery. Right. You know, because they just can't get right. You know? They got to get put out of their misery. You know? So you, you got to really understand what... The mind of the Heavenly Father, which is love, man. Because the Heavenly Father is the one who loved us, man. Right. You know? And that's killing the cancer. You know, you got a stubborn child, you know, that's rebellious and he don't want to listen and there's no judgment that's on mark, him. That's marked the night. It's going, it's going to go on to the next child. Yeah, and then the next sure. child. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cancer that's going to spread. Yeah. Why you think you're supposed to kill a homosexual? Exactly. Because that's a cancer that's going to spread. Yeah. You so know? A little leaven, leaven up the whole lump. You know, that's exactly what that is. It's talking about doctrine, but if, you know, doctrine, uh, from, from doctrine comes behavior, man. You know? Uh, but get Matthew uh, 10 and 38. This is uh, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Okay, continue, keep going. Oh, is that the one? Mm -hmm. I want to, if you love me more than, if you love them more than me. Uh, well, it's... it's Go down. He that loveth his life. So mm, I might have got the wrong one. Uh, if you love them more than me. Oh, Salakia. Start from verse 37. Uh, 37. Uh, yeah, this is Matthew chapter 10 and verse 37. He that loveth he, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. 
and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Right. So you're not supposed to put them over the Heavenly Father, man. Just like he said, you honor us, uh, back in, the, in, in, in Eli's story, it says you honor us your sons above me. You know? So then you wasn't worthy of him. That's why he cut, that, cut them off. You know? And the brother was saying, like the cancer, can you go to Mark 9? Right there. Go ahead, Al. Uh, this is Mark chapter 9, uh, verse 43. And if thine hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. Right, and that's talking about, you know, the metaphor for the body. It ain't talking about literally cutting off your eye, you know. Uh, you know, it's, talk, it's a metaphor for the body. So, hey, you know how some brothers, you know, they got a brother they might like in the truth, you know. <laughs> and they don't want to, they, they think they, that, that they love them, you know. But, hey, if they don't rebuke them, you're, even to the point where they got to cut them off, then that's not love. Because now you're bringing down the whole body. You know, you're letting that little wicked spirit spread, you know. And they're going to think they're doing the right thing. And then, hey, you better hope the husband and father don't just get rid of the whole lot, man. You got to cut it off. It says it's better to go to king of, kingdom maimed. You know? You know, cause, hey, man, if you, don't, if you ain't teaching somebody correcting them, they're not going to never learn. You know? Right. And that blood is going to be on your hands. Exactly. We can go to um, Proverbs. Yeah, Proverbs on 19 and 18. You know? Just this going to chastening the sons. This is... Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his cry. See? It said, chasten thy son while there is hope, man. <laughs> you know? And don't even, hey, if he crying, hey, fuck it. You know, you know you whooping your child, but it hurt me more than it hurt you. You know, but you know you got to do it. You yeah. know? You got to do it for, for them to learn. You know? It said, while thou was hope. Was that it on that? Oh, I think it's another verse. Um, it, it says a, a man of great wrath shall suffer punishment. But nah, that was yeah, it. Calm, yeah. All right. Um, so like it, bros. I want to get this real quick before we get the other one. This is uh, Deuteronomy thirteen verse six. It says, "If thy brother, thy son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy, the wife of thy bosom, or thy so like, the or." The wife of thy bosom or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, see, you love him, which is as thine own soul, go and serve other gods which thou hast not known. Thou nor thy fathers, namely the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thou not pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. See, you can't even conceal him. You ain't supposed to hide it. It says, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thy hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. <laughs> and thou shalt stone him with stones that he died because he have sought to thrust thee away from Yahweh thy power which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more such and do no more any such wickedness as this thing that is among you so if any of them try to pull you away from the Lord you supposed to hey, be the first to lift the stone which now you don't do that you don't kill him now but what the way to kill him now is, is cut him off that's what it is. They dead to me. You know? If they try to pull you away from this truth. You know? That's how you got to handle this. Because they, because what? The, hey, the Heavenly Father comes first. Point blank period. And if you don't know that, then, then you don't really have the true love of the Lord. Alright? Right, and that comes with girding up the loins of your mind. You know, you got, the scriptures say you got to gird up your loins. You know, that's, hey, that's going to be tough. It's easy to say it. It's another thing to actually do it, but then that shows that you are growing, and that shows that you're girding up your loins, you know, and being strong in the Lord, you know. Huh? Thirty seconds left. Yeah. Damn. All right. Um. Hey, well, you know, it's a couple more scriptures we got, but we're gonna just close it on that, you know. Um. Lord willing, it was edifying, and um, we wanna just give all praise and glory now to Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. And when I say uh, until the next lesson, shalom. Shalom. shalom.